Hello and welcome to the 167 podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be answering the question, is God mad at me? Stick around. Hello and welcome everybody to the 167 podcast. It's so good to see you back for episode three of season three. Three? Yeah, I think it's season three. We I should look around three. if our editorial production team. He, he isn't busy eating cake at the moment. Season yeah. two, he's saying. Season two. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's season three. Season three it is. Very yeah. good to see and to be with you guys for another episode. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see everybody. We're back. We we recently, we've released a few episodes um, onto Revive TV, which was awesome to That's see. That's right. Some of the lovely feedback in the comment section. Some people really did miss us. That's good to know, huh? It I'd, I'd was, I'd was actually very encouraging. To That's see why you've just, gotta, you've just got to lay, you've just got to pull back every now and then. Just yeah. to, just to be like, is this, still, is this still working? I believe, is the, this still I believe the saying is, absence makes the heart. That's right. Kinda. So that's just, that's kind of a weird dynamic that we've got yeah. with our audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but really good to see you. And, and if you're joining us for the first time, maybe this is the first episode that you've seen. Uh, really what the 167 uh, is all about is there's 168 hours in the week. Um, maybe one of those is spent in a church or a house of worship somewhere. You've still got plenty, 167 hours uh, to be exact, where uh, you can grow, you can take steps closer to God, you can grow in community. And we want to try to have some conversations, um, not very long, not, not very deep, but where we just kind of share some thoughts that we've got that can hopefully add value to those add other value. hours in the week. That's right. Yeah, that add value. And it's a blessing. How's it been going with 167 and, uh, and Revive TV? It's been excellent. Yeah, so good to see um, some of our viewers have crossed over. So we used to do the 167 podcast. We were we were on Spotify and we were and we were there. And I think we still are. But now we've kind of taken Revive TV on on YouTube and we've put all of our content right. on there to have a localized place where people can get access to. Um, anything and everything mm. that we try to do uh, through video and film to help. And it's been awesome. Like I mentioned, we've, can, we've gotten some comments of people uh, watching the first two episodes and enjoying us being back. We love doing this. Mm, we good. love having the conversation. So again, if you're watching this, we'd encourage you to, to keep giving us the comments. We yeah, love getting ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. from the comment section. I kind of feel like what we should say, we've got a podcast. I want to say the podcast network, but I don't think that's... We've got a podcast family. We've got, a, we've got conversations. We've got sermons. We've got shorts we got yeah. we got everything that you could possibly hope to to get from our youtube channel and i think um it's such a great way to have just more of an open platform through conversation like this with the 167 and yeah i look forward to it so like god is god mad at me it's a big question yeah man that's a, that's what we want to try and answer today and i th i think when when thinking about it and almost just reading around it came it came from a like, bit of a personal place for me like very much formative years in faith like teenager I kind of knew about God, but how I was introduced to God, I don't think, I don't know, was maybe the healthiest way. Uh, my mom used to watch, and this is no shade of my mom because she watches the 167. She loves it. We used to just stumble upon sometimes those those like rapture series, left behind stuff. I loved it. As a young believer. So I was, you know, very, very young. And you kind of develop this this kind of weird dynamic. You believe for sure, but there's a lot of like fear uh, you don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. I'll do anything and everything <laughs> to make sure I'm not left behind <laughs> when Jesus comes back. And uh, and it kind of it kind of creeped into how I viewed God and even and even some of the things that I did. I felt like that the way I lived and what I did was incredibly important. And as soon as I maybe dropped the ball or sinned, which which will happen as humans, that I kind of felt like there was this almost heavy heavy weight that came with that and that and that God wasn't stoked with me and I'd have to earn back his pleasure, earn back his love. And I was telling you about it before we started now that even when I was playing rugby, it was like, you know, God wants to bless me by helping me play well on Saturday. But if I if I misbehave during the week in the slightest way, if I sin or do something, 
God will make sure that I have a bad game on Saturday because God is concerned with that <laughs> with that type of thing. And uh, just reflecting and kind of laughing on some of the thoughts. Obviously, we've we've grown and we've de- developed and we understand that. But but the question is, God mad at me? I I do I do honestly think that there's some people even today, and it's actually a really natural thought that you look back at your life and maybe some of the areas where you've fallen short, some mistakes you've made, maybe you've made some really big mistakes. And I think some people are still walking around with this, you know what, God is actually not pleased with me, even mm-hmm. though maybe I've turned that area of my life around, still walking around with that weight of, you know, God is possibly mad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. One sin away from falling. Hey? Like yeah. um, God's got this sort of behavior scorecard in heaven and yeah. he's like checking it off. Almost like Sansa with that coal, like you yeah, know? yeah. If you're not, if you're not, if you've been a bad boy, like yeah. there's no, there's lump of coal, <laughs> you know. Um, no, I, I, I think for me, I think in the early days it happens a lot, but also you know when people make some big sin, like big sin, like when people make some big, you know, they're entrusted with a lot, and 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 then they fall in some way. Uh, you know, I think. I think the biggest part is actually not is God mad at you, but I think you're not able to forgive Correct. yourself. And yeah. so you project it on God. But even even maybe got to do with how you're raised in the sense of your parents, because all parents get mad at their kids. Yeah. I mean, you have to. Yeah. But you can almost, because parents are, are human, they will be mad in a different way that God is mad at you. They yeah. will hold that. They will remind you from time to time. And I think maybe we put that same thing on God, like mm. that when God forgives us of his, like, cause the Bible says that, um, as far as the East is from the West, mm. right. That's how far he causes our sin away when we repent. Yeah. And so we kind of think, yeah, that's cool. But he's probably still got it in the back pocket somewhere to bring it up. He's going to, he, he's, he's going to bring that. He's going to, I mean, what one Corinthians uh, talks about love doesn't keep record of wrong. But but geez, like that isn't that something we do so na- like I've got oh, yeah. it, I've got it the, you got it you got an ace in the back pocket if you not, need it we're not going to talk about it but if you do something <laughs> that I've said to me I've got that you're right it almost kind of feels like that yeah. thing is going to get brought up at some point hundred percent yeah I mean and I think that's pro that's the human nature the sure. fallen nature the you know mm-hmm. we want to get even you know I think God is wanting to rescue us and okay. Jesus has made it even an even playing field so like we can't ever be perfect. Mm. But it's weird though that the, sometimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Yeah. And I remember same as you in some sense of, of sporting. You know, when you when you've got something important that's coming up, you want to try to live as holy as you can, yeah. so that you can kind of squeeze enough good behavior into God's favor, so yeah. that it's going to go well. And then when it doesn't go well, you're like, oh, flip, this doesn't work anyway. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> um, I'll and, do what I want now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I think that's always the beginning because. This kind of grace is supernatural. Hey? Like yeah. it's not a normal thing to yeah. to forgive and to forget. No, no. I, isn't that what isn't that what Jesus almost really tries his best? He takes his disciples on that journey of, mm. of forgiveness. That scripture, you know, it's seventy times seven is how often. And that's coming from I think that's coming from a very forgiving uh, loads of grace that God mm. actually has for us, and one of the one of the best things. So, if, if people are listening and, and they're maybe resonating with some of the things that we're talking about, one of the one of the awesome things that happened maybe when I finished school was I started and, and Graham started teaching us about the character of God, who God really is. Because mm. before we start to understand His character, we formulate the picture, don't we, of, of like who God is. And and in my head, it was it was a God who loved me, sure. But he also, you know, he was waiting. He needed to correct me every time I did something wrong. And, and it wasn't in a healthy way in my head. Mm. But when you start learning about the character of God, that he is a God that is, that is all loving. He's, he's a God that is a, described as a good father in heaven who wants to give you good gifts, who wants you to live out the purpose and the call, but not as this purely disciplinarian. For me, when I started understanding those types of things, I could start to understand how would God want me to respond or to act in certain situations. It, it, it moved away from being a fear thing because somebody wants to punish me. It started becoming a thing. You know what? I trust God loves me so much and he's got a purpose and a plan that scripture says has been laid out, a plan that's to prosper me for hope that I can, with that knowledge, I can then move from a place of, I'm actually coming from grace. I'm coming from love. I'm not coming from, hey, if I get one thing wrong, then it's, you know, then it's the end of the mm. line. Then it's punishment time. 
those small things, Graham would teach us, you know, the, the omniscience, the, the sovereignty of God and, and his bigness, but then bring it back down to, hey, there's a God in heaven who's a, who's a, who's a loving father mm. who, who is there, who walks with you. He's given us the Holy Spirit, yeah. who is this counselor, this helper, this guide, that, that it's, not, it's not the other end of it. No, 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 you could, hey, you can do everything wrong and it doesn't matter. Of course not. G- God wants to guide and lead you and help you get to the place where you want it to be, but it's not coming from a place of, fear about what i do it's actually about know what he's given us a helper so that we can become those people that god's called us to be step into that purpose and the holy spirit has played a huge part in that for me just moving my mindset Mm. away from that of fear yeah yeah that's good Mm. you know even the the role of the holy spirit in all of it is vital because i think you know when you get saved you you're on this like this this high you know you feel you literally feel born again. You feel refreshed and um, you have this incredible experience of God's love and forgiveness and this washing over you. But then you start to realize how sinful you actually are because the Holy Spirit is making you aware now. Mm. And it's not that you're more sinful since you got saved. You're just aware of what you've always been doing. Yeah. And I think that hyper awareness can almost go, oh, flip, I, like, geez, I keep messing up. Mm. it's like you know when you go to youth camps it's the same kids that get saved and get baptized Hand every, up every night. year yeah. you know we still have people in our church who continue to get saved yeah which is it's, it's no problem there's no issue with that but um i think it does come out of a my salvation can slip and fall at any moment mm. because of my sin and so i i need to i need to behave and be good to a god who is sort of like He's in on two the minds. Fence yeah, yeah, yeah. About who? About me? Like, mm. um, he probably loves the pastors because they're like, yeah, they're cool. They're, they're. I mean, the pastors are the closest people to heaven, <laughs> right? <laughs> Except that he holds them even doubly accountable, which there is a scary go. thought. But, but there is these perceptions that people make up in their minds, and for me, I think what what we always have to come back to is is that it's not what i do it's what god has already Good. done yeah right because that's where it comes down to but i mean that's all nice and well for like the little white lies mm-hmm. and the, i forgot to pay this and i forgot to do that and mm-hmm. you know i you know i, I, I rooked an inchy on the side or whatever but what about the big stuff for like yeah like what about you i don't know defrauding your mm-hmm. company or uh you know not paying your tithe or <laughs> 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 joking uh or i really i really am joking um or you know maybe even infidelity mm. in your relationship like what about that mm. like where should people because i think there is this thing of you've walked with god for a certain amount of time mm. and then you do something you know you shouldn't do mm. and it's, it's it's such a big thing yeah what do you what, what about that mm. uh, i think it's an excellent question. I was thinking about it. I was like, if Swen doesn't ask, I'm going to ask him. Um, it's an excellent question. And I, and I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody uh, this week on Revive Stories, um, which is another, if you are watching this, you're on Revive TV. Shameless plug. You'll find Revive Stories there and, and chatting to some of the amazing people in our church and some of their stories. And, and I literally, a, a moment like this happened for, for one of the ladies that I was chatting to, a really, a really big moment. And she shares it in the story, but... Um, but where she had an abortion and she felt incredibly to just this, this weight of guilt and shame. Sure. And it just got her to a place where she was like, you know what? I actually don't think I can continue to live this way. She, pl- she had planned the moment where she would end her, end her life. Mm. And, um, what was amazing was that God orchestrated moments where she could meet with the right people. Um, somebody could, could pray with her and she could experience the love of God. But I think for anybody watching here that is saying, maybe had these thoughts, God's mad at me, or there's been this moment, you mentioned a few examples, this moment where something really big happened. I, I think it's two parts. And there's a saying um, where somebody said, you know, you confess something to God and you get forgiveness. Mm. When you confess to man, and man you trust, let me mm. put that in there, you can get healing. Mm. So I think it's great for us to get into the habit of bringing things before God. And the mindset there is, is sometimes like, well, God, you know, he knows everything. So, so why must I say it to him? It's incredibly important mm. as, as believers and as we walk and journey through faith to bring our concerns, bring our troubles, bring our worries before God because he really cares mm. and loves us. And uh, we, scripture teaches that when we can commit, it doesn't matter how big, the, the, Bible, the Bible doesn't list a sin. Hey, once you've done this, it's actually the end of the road. You don't really have to try anymore. The Bible doesn't list a sin like that. It talks about grieving the Holy Spirit, but th- that is something that happens. That's not a single moment or action. 
So let's say something big does happen. We can take the abortion as an example. Um, if we can get into a space, firstly, to bring that before God and to understand that when we do bring it before God with a repentant heart, a heart mm. that says, you know what, I don't want to do this again. I need, I need help. Holy Spirit must guide and lead me away from this. When we do that, there's forgiveness in that moment. Mm. And that's an incredible revelation for, to understand, hey, God forgives me. So this mm. mindset that you might have had or that I had growing up is like, I don't know if God, if I'm ever, no, no, no. Scripture says God does forgive you in that moment. Mm. But then you spoke so well about um, have you forgiven yourself? Mm. God, God's forgiven you. Have you forgiven yourself? And I think that journey is much longer. Mm. And it comes back to that second part of what I was saying. It requires good people around you mm. that trust you, uh, that you trust and that care about your future mm. and will keep and will keep God really at the focal points of it. Mm. So it's God, bringing it before God brings forgiveness, bringing it before people and going on a journey with people mm. brings healing. I would yeah, say if, if, there, if there's somebody watching and, and they've ha you've had a moment and you're trying to deal and you're really struggling, is there, one or, is there a life group leader? Is there a pastor? Is there somebody in your life that you can that you can go on a journey of of speaking and working through and allowing the Holy Spirit into those conversations mm -hmm. and those moments? And and I think time will heal those wounds, but when you've got the right people around you, I think He heals in the right way, and yeah. time will heal in the right way. So th that would that would be my thing. And it's easy for me to sit here and say there could be people going through some really hectic things and and things have happened in their life. Um, if we can, with a repentant heart and spirit, come before God and ask for forgiveness and move away from whatever that thing was and, and step into what God has for us, there will be forgiveness. But then it's the journey of forgiving yourself. You need good people that love and care about you to go on that journey. And you need to give them the space hmm. to do that. Yeah, and you know the Bible it, it teaches that the devil is the accuser of the brethren mm. and or the or the followers of God, and so whenever we mess up, which we all do, he is there to accuse us, and that's why forgiving yourself is so hard because you think you're over something, and then he's going to remind you, oh, you're not, you're actually, you're faking this. Yeah, you're not supposed to be a follower. You see how far you keep falling short. Like, mm. how can you love God and do this? Like, all these things come to mind. Mm. Um. And, it, and, and, you know, when Jesus forgives us, he forgives us of all sin, past, present, and future. So yeah. he's dealt with the future Very and good. the past and the present. But the enemy keeps on reminding you of how, how short you fall. And, you mm. know, the, so the, the thing is, he will, pro he will try heap on guilt, shame, and condemnation. Yeah. In Romans it says, for there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ mm. Jesus. So we're followers of Jesus. Condemnation is not coming from him. It's actually coming from the devil. And we're accepting those yeah. words. And so it's actually what we've got to do is try to find a way in our minds to cut that off and to confess our sin to God, like mm. you were saying, and to, to one another. But in that repentance to God, Find, and it's been true of my li in my life that because of shame and guilt, what yes. does that do? It actually keeps you away from God. It's the mm. shame and the guilt that separates you from God. Mm. But if you look at throughout Jesus' ministry, whenever someone was guilty or full of shame, he actually drew near to them. Yeah, he did. Uh, and then he forgave them and there was reconciliation. Mm. And it's the same for us. Like once we confess our sin and repent, it's done, it's dealt with. Mm. So it's almost we've got to train ourselves that shame guilt and condemnation instead of letting them be the wall they need wow, to be the trigger thoughts. that yeah. leads us into repentance yeah because the longer you take to repent the harder it kind of becomes mm. because now it's all about self-righteousness mm. i'm going to work my way back into god's good books but there is no key for that there is no way there is only one way his name is jesus and we've got to lean into that and i find that even years later the devil will still go, remember when you did that stupid thing? 100%. I can't believe you're still trying to be a X, Y, Z. Yeah. I, why are you trying to get your life together? You don't, that's not who you are. Father of all lies, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And so, is God mad at you? No, not as a child. No. If you're an angry, rebellious sinner against God, well, there is going to be wrath one day. There will be, yeah. But right now is an opportunity for God's grace to be experienced. Mm. And I would lean into that right now. Yeah, very yeah. good. I think just maybe wrapping up that thought, I watched an incredible talk. Again, I think it's probably a talk you've seen as well with um, Dr. Robbie Sonarega speaks about guilt and shame mm. and how guilt and shame are the primary precursors to relapse. Sure. So guilt and shame are not are not from God, but but people who allow guilt and shame to come into their heart about an action that they might very well know is wrong, 
but we, we give guilt and shame the space to come in to make you feel terrible, to make you feel less than, and then unworthy to come into the presence of God. That's usually the signs that you are going to, again, do the thing mm. that you don't want to do. It's that it's a, it's a passage in Romans as well. I do the things I, I don't want to do, and the things I do want to do, I can't do, or I don't do. It's, it's, it's the battle and it's attention. But I love what you said there. I think if we can allow guilt and shame and conviction to actually be signs, I need to get it. And it's going to feel weird. Mm. Because guilt and shame usually it's like you wanna you wanna hide yourself. You wanna hide. You wanna you wanna like Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve, it's like you know cover up. Where are you? I'm thinking of some of those moments where Jesus drew close to people, like right like the lady who was who was dragged out to be stoned. Um, it's caught in the act. It's like if there's ever a moment where it's like just hide my face, get me away from here. Jesus walks right up to her, forgives her of mm. her sin tells her to sin no more i'm like in that very moment so even in the moments and this is going to be a crazy thought but a moment where maybe it's it's like right after doing something or messing up in a way it's like jesus has set the tone and he's given an example that even in that moment i'm going to draw close sure so you the ball's in your court if you want to take the moment and take the time because what you said there is so right the longer the more space we give there Mm. it can be it can be a lot harder it hardens your heart but i love what you bring even that story that you know, that lady's coming, she's dragged before Jesus. And Jesus was not okay with her sin. He Correct. never has ever said, no. oh, don't worry, it's, it's okay, fine, yeah. it's fine. Like, don't, don't, I love you, it's all good. Mm. He never did that. He never excused her sin. Mm. He forgave her sin. Mm. And, and that's what he was able to get into that conversation because everyone there was a sinner and so yeah. they couldn't stone her. And that's the same with us. He doesn't, like, I don't want us to paint this picture of, oh, he's just so full of grace and yes. love that you can sin as much as you want and everything's going to be okay. That's, then that's not even loving. No, <laughs> yeah. that's not loving. That's, yeah. not, and that's not even, that's not understanding grace because sure. the more you do that because you think, oh, it's all grace, the more you drive the nails through Jesus' hands in a sense. Mm. But it's to realize that, Philip, I have, I actually have offended God. Yeah. But God is so faithful to forgive me every yeah. single time mm. and his love is What's it? Um, I mean, is it Romans? Your love is so high, so deep, mm. so wide, mm. you know. Um, and I think it's—I think you even just how you started this conversation on the character of God, who God is, yeah. is to realize that God is judge, mm. but He is also love. Yeah. And it's His love that allows Him to judge properly, mm. and it's His love that enables us, you know, enables Him to forgive us completely. Mm. you know and he would pay for the uh, it's just, i mean geez, yeah. sin, sin needs to be answered for it does and you're it right. will be you're right you're right but i would rather i would rather go on the journey of of inviting jesus in and and accepting the grace and mercy on this side of eternity because on the other side of eternity um the the punishment for sin is severe mm. and it will be handed up because our god we talk again about character our god is holy um, he he must be separate from sin. But right now, Jesus took the punishment. He took he took the shame. He took the guilt. So while there's an opportunity to ask the question, is God mad at me? God is mad at sin, mm. and we are sinful. So we have got. There is something that we can do right now is we can accept God, we can accept Jesus into our heart, and we can go on the journey of allowing Jesus to or the Spirit to transform as we go on a journey of becoming more like Jesus. For sure. Do that now. Take the opportunity to do that now instead of waiting for a moment where it feels right or where you think you're, <laughs> where you need it more. We need it equally now on our best day than at, on our worst day as well. I want to throw you a bit of a curveball. I want to throw you, I want, I want you to, I want to put you up to bat in England. Line it up. With a Duke cricket ball and just get, you know, Jimmy <laughs> Anderson to pull some out swingers <laughs> to you here to get something tricky, a bit yeah. of, uh, you know. Um, what about things have been going badly f- in your life mm. and you're following God and you've messed up, yeah. but is God mad at you because your mm. spouse is angry? You've lost your job. Like, is God mad at you and showing it in your life? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a very good question. How do you combat that? You just let that one go, or, or do you do you play? Do you have a go? You play it. I think for me, I can I can speak from from, and this is yeah, I can speak from experience. There have been moments in my life where it feels like things aren't aren't quite going my way, or aren't quite going the way I thought they would. Or surely a son of God, you know, <laughs> surely someone who works for the church is going to get more favor than this. And and I, I've I've just I've come to the I've come to the realization, especially on the earth in the earth that we live in on the world. There is, uh, it's imperfect. Mm. 
we are often and sometimes we have to carry the consequences of other people's decisions. And listen, I make a fair share of bad decisions as well. Um, but for me, I, I've got a very, I've established this conviction in my heart. My, our God doesn't change. He, he is so consistent. But sometimes conditions can change. Circumstances can change. How you wanted something to go doesn't quite work out the way you want to. But, but for me in my heart, God's plan will prevail always. So, so the, the, the way, the journey and how it looks and going through a, you know, a bad season. I mean, Psalm 23 talks about, it talks about somebody going through a tough season. doesn't mean, hey, you'll always be on the mountaintops. It says, hey, when you're in the valley, my staff will protect mm-hmm. you. My rod is there to comfort and to guide you. So as, as Christians, I don't think we can, I think it's dangerous to develop a theology or a train of thinking that things will always be good and then God is always happy. Or when things are not as good, God is unhappy. Um, I think that we have to, we, we live in a world and we're doing a series of one Peter. We are foreigners. We're outsiders yeah. to the culture. So sometimes things will look different or it won't go quite the way you want it to go. Um, God is good. He's consistent. He hasn't changed. It's the, I feel it's the nature of the world we live mm-hmm. in as well. God hasn't left my side. He's still with me. Mm-hmm. And it's also a part of, I think, a part of faith as well. Faith is what makes our religion so different to other religions. Is, is believing and trusting in something that we can't always see, can't always feel, um, but he's placed eternity in the heart of man. So do I feel God has left me in those bad moments? Hey, sometimes I do feel that way. But I remind myself in Scripture that is not that is sincerely not the case. There's a lot of factors that happen in this world. Our God is good and He's consistent, and He's there. And in those moments where I do feel again feel down, I feel like things aren't going my way. Sometimes I need the perspective of another person, another believer, to remind and to encourage me. The plan hasn't changed. Mm. I haven't deviated. Maybe there's something in my life that I can, I can focus on, or there's things that I've let get loose. Somebody can come in and say, "Full, just tighten in that area, or look at that area," mm. um, as well. But uh, in a nutshell, yeah, I, I think you I answered that. I mean, really well, and I think you know that 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 would be true of someone who's who's I think looking to honor God. Yeah, you know, I, I I do think that once we once we're in a relationship with God, like we don't have to question everything. Sometimes it's just life. Yeah, <laughs> right. And sometimes it's just there's an enemy, and why would he want everything to go well for you? Yeah. But I do think from time to time, you probably have to take stock and evaluate. I think that's good. Am I making godly decisions? Correct. Because you were just like mm. consequences, right? Um, okay, God's not, ma- God's not bringing this about, but maybe he's not, I'm not getting breakthrough in these areas or maybe these are just consequences of a lot of bad decisions like yeah. you're saying. And am I, when I look at my li- life, like for instance, you know, um, am I am I going out with somebody? Am I living with someone, sleeping with someone? I'm out or sex outside of marriage, or I'm not picking on that sin, but like other mm. stuff like it. But there doesn't seem to be like a lot of health in my relationships. Well, let's try honor God in the relationships that we do have. Yeah, you know, like st- like stuff like that. I think we do have to consider healthy conversations. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not like op- nitpick everything, but no. I think taking stock. And I try to do that. I try to take stock. Like, okay, how's my life? What are my decisions mm-hmm. like? Um, and but i don't think god's ever like mad at you i think that's more of a discipline issue of him like he disciplines those he loves yeah you know you only discipline your legitimate children you don't discipline other people's children (laughs) right (laughs) so he's just trying to discipline children to help them to grow um but i thought which is man i appreciate the conversation and what you said and i think yeah hopefully we can all just get more uh more vision and revelation of who God is mm. uh, for us, mm. you know, and, and live in the truth of that, f- in the freedom of that truth. Yeah. Rather than constantly looking over our shoulder, like, is God going to strike me or not strike me? Yeah. You know, I think yeah. it was good. Very good. Thank you, man. Yeah. And even just as we wrap it up, um, is God mad? I think we've got a loving father in heaven who loves you so much that he will, you know, move heaven and earth to make sure that he can spend eternity with you. Mm. And uh, sometimes we'll make mistakes and we'll do things the wrong way. That love is, there is nothing that can separate us, but that love sometimes means, hey, I'm going to bring people along the way or I'm going to introduce you to things that's going to help, you know, move the behavior or change things. And I think that's fine. Mm. I think that's okay. I hope, I hope, I'm, I hope I'm sounding clear because it doesn't sound super clear in my head, but, but it's being okay that the, the, the core default emotion from God towards you 
is love, but he loves you so much that he understands heaven and hell, very real realities. So we'll go through things in this life and we'll make mistakes and that's okay. But there is a journey and we've discussed it, but there's a journey that we can go on to reconcile and to allow mm. the spirit to continue to work through our hearts, guide us and, and lead us in this life. Not, to, not for perfection, we're never going to be perfect, but to be closer and more like Jesus. Good. Hope that's been helpful. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined us um, on the 167. Again, we love, love, love the comments that you guys leave. So continue to give feedback. And I hope maybe this conversation has, share it. has sparked some ideas. Share it. Share it on Facebook. Share it with friends and family or copy the link to WhatsApp. Or if there's anything else, maybe there's something else that you've been thinking about or people have been discussing in your world and you'd love to, and you'd love to hear us chat about it. Leave it in the comment section. We'd love to have a conversation around that. But God bless you. Uh, we can't wait to see you next time.